Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. A patient presents to you with a deep, dull pain in the wrist that is worsened when the patient squeezes their hand or grips on something. You ask the patient if there's been any recent injuries and the patient tells you that recently the patient fell on an outstretched hand which resulted in a wrist extension causing dorsiflexion to an extreme degree with compression on the radial side of the hand. So the patient's physical exam shows you that there is a tenderness or a tender point located near the anatomic snuff box. In addition to this, you try a compression test near the scaphoid and the patient complains of tenderness. So you compress the patient's thumb axially and longitudinally along the first metacarpal. And you're able to find the source of a possible scaphoid fracture. Another test you try is called the Watson's test where there is a shift in the scaphoid and that results in tenderness and popping of the scaphoid bone that's felt over the volar wrist during radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist. In addition, pronation of the wrist followed by ulnar deviation produces pain in the anatomic snuff box. So there's three important maneuvers you tried, the scaphoid compression test, palpation of the anatomic snuff box, the scaphoid shift test, which is called the Watson's test, and pronation of the wrist followed by ulnar deviation, which resulted in a pain. Now, who is most affected by scaphoid fractures? It's mainly young males in the age 15 to 30 years of age. And what happens is that the carpal bone, which is articulating with the distal radius, trapezium, and capitate is the scaphoid bone. And there is a fracture of the scaphoid bone. There's three types, proximal, medial, and distal. And most likely, the incidence is 2% of all fractures, but it's the most commonly fractured carpal bone. So how do you make the diagnosis? The diagnosis is made by imaging. An x-ray or an MRI are the best imaging modalities. Clinical exam is not accurate for detecting an occult scaphoid fracture. So the anatomical snuff box tenderness or the scaphoid compression or the shift test along with pronation of the wrist are beneficial in making your initial differential but to make a definitive diagnosis an x-ray should be ordered. Also rule out signs of de and stenosynovitis, distal radius fracture, a external carpi radialis strain, or a flexor carpi radialis strain. The imaging, which is the x-ray, should be taken in an anterior, posterior, lateral, and an oblique aspect. Also, a MRI should be considered when the scaphoid fracture clinical suspicion is high but the x-ray is negative. High resolution sonography is reliable and has been used as an accurate method of detecting scaphoid fracture. And what about the treatment? Well, for a suspected fracture with a negative x-ray, consider casting for several weeks and then re-evaluation with a follow-up MRI. For a non-displaced fracture, cast immobilization without thumb immobilization, which is the Coley's cast, appears to be beneficial, as well as long and short thumb spica casts are beneficial for patients. Splinting and referral to an orthopedist for any 
displaced fracture should also be considered in cases of a non-healing fracture. Also, casting without thumb immobilization appears to be as effective as inclusion of the thumb in the class casting for the non-displaced type of scaphoid fractures. Moreover, surgical treatment for non-displaced or minimally displaced scaphoid fractures may improve functional outcome and decrease time from work as compared to conservative treatment. So if the fracture is non-displaced, then surgical treatment should be considered. Also, the early internal fixation of a non-displaced scaphoid waste is not clearly beneficial. So the operative treatment for non-displaced scaphoid fracture is beneficial when conservative treatment has failed. That was a podcast talking about the scaphoid fracture and some of the most important clinical aspects of a scaphoid fracture. Thank you for listening and good luck in medical school and on the board exam.